All right. Um, it's been about a month since I made that last video and it went off, I think. It went really well. My Instagram was um, really active. Um, all good stuff. Um, lots of lots of questions and lots of requests. Um, I'll probably need to get on top of it because I'm really slow at, you know, producing these videos. Um, but I just wanted to make one today. It's another smoothie. Um, and I do have some cool stuff that I want to talk about that I've taken down dot points from people's comments on YouTube, uh, inboxes and uh, on Instagram and emails. Uh, <clears throat> but basically that last smoothie, uh, I know it tastes like shit, but it's really good for you. This one here that I'm going to make now um, tastes awesome. And it's also really good for you. And one of the key points I want to make about this smoothie is that it does gain weight. So um, it's good for people like me because I'm like, I can't, I, I struggle to gain weight. So anyway, the smoothie, uh, I think it's got about a thousand calories in it, give or take, depending on how much peanut butter you put in it. Um, but yeah, it's basically got black pepper just to activate the curcumins in the turmeric, uh, ground ginger. Sometimes you can chop up normal ginger, but I'm a bit lazy and then when I'm in a rush, I just chuck this bad boy in and we're good to go. Good for my belly and it generally like stops it from like gurgling and stuff as it does, as it do. Uh, what else? Mango tastes awesome. Blueberries, blackberries, um, and the red ones, strawberries, they're good. Yogurt, um, I use coconut yogurt. This stuff's pretty expensive, but it's really good. And it's, um, yeah, I think it's a probiotic, this one as well. But um, I don't think this is a lot of, yeah, 129 calories per 100 grams. So there's not a lot of calories in that really. <clears throat> dairy free, uh, lactose free, full cream, full cream milk. Just chuck some of that in there because it tastes good. It's better than water. And then I put like, I'll slow it down when I'm putting it in, but I put a shitload of this stuff in it. And I only use smooth peanut butter because whenever I use um, chunky peanut butter, like nuts and peanuts, I know like some of the like the boys and girls like on the chat they can eat peanuts, but I can't eat peanuts. Eh? Um, so yeah, I use the smooth stuff. And I think I put like maybe. I've Googled it, but you know how accurate Google is. I think I put like five tablespoons in, but we'll see. Get a couple of random like little stray bits of pepper in there they taste like shit but the rest of it it tastes really good and i forgot to say i, I throw honey in there as well just to like sweeten it up um and yeah i've gained like a kilo and a half in like three weeks which is pretty good because i'm always surfing or working or um doing yoga i'm always pretty active so it's hard for me to even like keep the weight on that i've got um i'm about six two almost and i weigh about 70 to 72 i like fluctuate um so anyway, um, I changed my routine up for the first time in about four years, I think. Um, <clears throat> so I used to fast, I used to fast um, morning from when I woke up to about one o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and, and then I'd eat again at about seven. So the reason why I started to fast in the first place was so that I wasn't eating at the start of the day. Um, so there wasn't like food processing in my pouch or my stomach um, and I wasn't like kind of feeling uncomfortable during the day, which does happen. Um, and then by like three o'clock or 12 o'clock or whatever it was, like needing to go to the bathroom. Um, but I was always like pretty drowsy, I guess, like always a bit run down, especially if I woke up at five, went for a surf um, and then I had to go to work and I wasn't eating until like Pardon me, one o'clock, like there goes all my fat stores, there goes all my energy, you know. Um, any little bit of weight that I could have put on was just gonna be like chewed up in, in the surf or whatever. Um, so I thought I'll change it around and 
and like I wasn't sleep, I sleep all right, but like when you eat at seven o'clock, I've done like a dye test. I put dye in one of these smoothies um, and it was blue dye because if it was red dye, I'd probably freak out and be like, shit, I've got blood. No, it was blue dye. So I was shitting blue for a few days, but um, it took about six to eight hours for each meal to process through and like obviously come out. Um, so if I'm eating at seven o'clock at night, it was coming out at like three or four in the morning and then I'd get to sleep for like another hour and then um, I'd have to get up for work or whatever. Or I'd have to get up at like 12 o'clock at night for like the one o'clock. So if I ate at one o'clock, I was, or two o'clock, I'm getting up at like, if it's eight hours later, I'm getting up at 10 o'clock at night. If I go to sleep at eight, I'm waking up at 10 o'clock to go to the toilet, then you might not get it all out and you have to get up at two o'clock and then you might not get that all out and then you have to get up and it's just so on and so forth. So I thought, fuck it, uh, bugger it. I'll, um, I'll change things up. So I'm now eating at like 5 a.m. and I'm just eating easily digested foods. I'm just eating eggs, uh, fish, white rice. It's pretty plain stuff, but it's, an, it's high in protein and it's enough to like, and it's enough to like get me through that morning period, right? Um, and then at 12 o'clock, I'll have a really big meal. I'll have like chicken, fish, red meat, because I'm eating a little bit of red meat now, just because my iron levels were a bit low. Um, I'll definitely have the smoothie every day. I have one or two of these smoothies. Um, and just the normal stuff that I do eat. Um, and like, I've been sleeping so good. I've got like a Garmin, this isn't it, but I've got like a Garmin Fitbit watch or whatever they are. I've got the Garmin and then I've got the Fitbit Sense and I've compared both of them. And I went from having like four hours of sleep of broken sleep to now I'm roughly like averaging, my weekly average is about uh, eight hours. And I don't care, I get up like once a night, if that, and that's maybe to pee if I've had too much to drink before bed. So like it works really well. Um, and I have so much energy during the day, like fair enough, I have to go to the, like maybe a toilet at like 3 or 30 in the afternoon, just like once, um, which normal people go to the bathroom once a day anyways, um, just with me. Wherever I am, I have to go to the bathroom. So I mean, it could be like a freaking park or somewhere real sketchy, but you just got to deal with it and like build a bridge and get over it. So anyway, I'm stoked with my new um, routine. It's awesome. Um, like everything's great about it and uh, yeah I recommend trying it but I recommend trying it and not trying anything else um, a lot of the feedback I get from people they're like they add too many things in at once they're so eager to like improve their diets or improve the quality of their life which is totally understandable but they throw too many things in the mixer at once and then you don't know what works and what doesn't if you throw five different things in like five new foods in one day and then you get diarrhea or you get a blockage or you feel like shit you're not going to know what food triggered that so just my recommendation is to try one new thing over maybe like one to two weeks um, whether it's food or a workout or a routine uh, a supplement like even though I don't really take supplements but that's the one thing that I would really like 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 people to try and do is not add too many new things in and try too many new things at once um, which I'm guilty of doing too sometimes you know so another thing that I do which is real funny and I will demonstrate once I have someone to film me do it is um, getting as comfortable as possible before I leave the house and um, this one here is essential because we colons absorb gas right J patches don't absorb gas. I think they may absorb a tiny bit, but they're not designed to. They're designed to like pump that stuff through and then let the colon do its thing. But we don't have one, so it just builds up. Bloating is a big issue for most people with pouches. And um, one way that you can kind of put a bit of a cap on that is by eating good, chewing really well. Um, diet has a fair bit to do with it, but I mean, we're all different, so that's just what I've found out. Um, and there is some ways that you can get gas out, and they're pretty funny, and I will demonstrate later, like I said, but once you get rid of that gas, like you could feel like you need to go to the toilet really badly. And then you just do a huge fart, like it's long ads, man. Like I've had Uber drivers rock up next door, and they're like looking around like, they can hear it, and my neighbors can hear it. Um, anyway, yeah, so once you release that gas, it's really good, eh? 
So you can get the urgency to go to the bathroom and it's not even, you're not even passing anything. All you gotta get rid of is that wind and once you get rid of that, the urgency goes and you're good for like another four hours. Um, like I said, yeah, everyone can hear, eh? my neighbors probably hear it all the time. Eh? I feel so sorry for my neighbors and shit or whatever. Gotta do what you gotta do. So anyway, yeah, that is how I get my pouch ready for the day. Like I'll lay on my stomach, I'll lay on my side. There's a couple of like little like child's pose, um, which is a yoga pose, but it really helps. It's not good though when you're doing yoga because then you just want to let one rip and you're just like, no, it's like a confined space. So everyone's gonna like freaking pass out. So yeah, don't do that. But um, yeah, that's how I get comfortable for my day, you know? And I do that every day. I've got a plan ahead. If I have to be out somewhere at eight, I'll wake up at six possibly 5.30, have a coffee, get things moving, have some food, go lay down for like another 45 minutes, roll around, you know, it's a bit time wasting, but you can do whatever you gotta do. Do some invoicing, read, study, <clears throat> whatever. It's just really important to do that because if you wake up at eight, you've gotta be somewhere at 8.30, you don't, have to go to the, you don't have time to go to the toilet, you don't have time to prepare for your day, you're rushing, and trust me, being stressed, rushing, and getting agitated, it's not good with a pouch, and it's really easy to get agitated with a pouch. Um, and the only way around that is to just prepare, I think. And the more you prepare, the more it becomes normal, the easier it gets. Uh, and that's just me, that's just what I found out. Um, so yeah, preparation is key. Try and do that. Uh, what else? Creatine. I haven't tried creatine since like high school, but I think I'm gonna try creatine again. One of my mates, uh, or a couple of my mates who have pouches on creatine, and um, they look really good. They go to the gym and stuff, and I know that it repairs your muscles and whatnot. Um, I'm just trying to see what benefits I can get out of taking it. So I've done a bit of research, and I'm just gonna test myself and see, um, see what happens. And uh, yeah, I'll probably give you an update in about four weeks on that. I know the first two weeks apparently you're supposed to like really like have bad runs, so I'm not looking forward to that, but apparently after that your body gets used to it and then you just get a bit of fluid retention and then you're good to go. Okay, so uh, I've got a question here that says after surgery, uh, how long did it take for my stoma to heal and like the scar and whatnot? Um, and then the experience after reversal surgery I'm assuming um, so basically <clears throat> I'll go from the start so that in case people are getting like the first surgery second third so on I only had two stages um, <clears throat> but the first surgery is the big one the first surgery is really it's difficult I'm not gonna like sugarcoat it it's difficult um, the best thing you can do pardon me <clears throat> all that peppers <sighs> Um, the best thing you can do is go into it as healthy as you can, um, you know, have a positive mindset and just go into it real healthy, even though it's, it's going to be hard, you know, you're on, you, you've got UC or Crohn's or whatever you may have, um, just going to it as healthy as you can be at that point in time. So try and have a bit of weight on you, um, just keep drinking water and stuff, because um, the healthier you are going into the surgery, the quicker you'll heal. When I went into the surgery, I was crook as a dog, I wasn't eating. I'd had like bleeding for about three months prior to that non-stop every day, like no solid output. So I was really crook. And I think I went from about 90 kilos to about 58, I think it was 58. But, um, so I've only managed to gain 12 kilos. I could gain more, I think, but I'm just so active. So that's never gonna happen. But yeah, the first surgery is really hard. So yeah, it does feel a bit strange uh, once they've like removed your colon and you wake up and you're all like dazed and stuff from all the anesthesia, but um, waking up to like the, the pouch stuck to your belly is a bit confronting. Um, personally, I was stoked. I was like, sweet, my colon's gone. I've got no disease. Um, it's a new, it's a fresh start, you know? It's the start of a long road, but it's a fresh start, um, which is we're lucky that we're able to be able to like receive that. So yeah, it's a bit confronting. The stoma nurse will be there. There'll be like a, I don't know, like an ER nurse or something, or there'll be a nurse there that's like with you when you wake up to tell you not to like fiddle around with it and all that kind of stuff, as much as like you just want to like see what the fuck's going on. Um, so there'll be a nurse with you when you wake up. Um, 
and they'll tell you you've just come out of the surgery, they'll check on you, they'll probably be doing your obs and stuff. And then you'll just go back to your ward and do not eat a solid meal, man. I got given a steak as my first meal. They miss, they mess it up with like the blokes next door or something. And I'm here smashing down a steak, my first meal. And that stuffed me up for two weeks. I couldn't eat. I was eating ice chips because it got stuck up here. And it, it was just stuck. So my bowel turned off, which was horrible because then you can't drink. They give you like a pick line under your arm and um, you just take fluids through here. And it's like, it sucks because you really want to drink you really want water I didn't even care about food I just wanted water um, so yeah just try and eat take it very slowly don't rush it um, and the first question I always get from people after that surgery is how long until I can work out but give it like three months eh? and always check with like your GP and your surgeon um, I waited like four because I was just don't want to be very like sure that I was okay to work out um, and probably no core exercises either for a bit. But yeah, anyway, talk to your surgeon about that. Uh, stage two. So I don't know much about stage three. Um, yeah, I know that stage three, they create, I think they create the stoma, then they create the pouch, and then they reverse it. But stage two, they create the pouch and the stoma in the first one, and then they reverse it. So anyway, reversal surgery is awesome. It goes for like half an hour, whereas the first one goes for like six or something and longer if, I know boys that have had like 10 hour surgeries, but mine was like six and a half, seven hours. And the second surgery was half an hour, 45 minutes. And I was in and out. Um, I think I stayed in the hospital only for like five days, six days maybe. And um, not a lot of pain, just like I was really like, really like curious to see like what happened. And um, it's not a bad experience, the second one. Um, and everyone expects like, I don't know, I expected like, what did I really expect? It was really confusing. Like I, I was hoping for the best, but when I first went to the bathroom, it was just like water. And then like the whole next like two years was pretty rough. Like um, I did so much experimenting and I wish that I had someone kind of there to tell me um, and give me advice and tips because the surgeons are great, the nurses, the stoma nurses are great, but really they don't have a J pouch. They don't understand what works and what doesn't. Um, and that's my opinion. They think they, they might do, but I don't think really. Um, that's just my personal opinion. So I think like the best thing you can do is to have a healthy diet. And I think don't snack. Snacking, like some people can snack, but I think if you're gonna, if, if you only eat small meals and you wanna have like a small brekkie, a small lunch and a small dinner, space it out like four or five hours so that your pouch gets a break in between and it's not always digesting food and holding stuff. Um, but yeah, second surgery is pretty, pretty cruisy. Um, and then it's just like ex experimenting and stuff for the next six to 12 months. Um, and um, seeing what foods your pouch can handle and seeing what pouch, like foods your pouch can't handle. Um, and I can't really dive too deep into that because everyone's different, eh? Like I've got mates that can eat, like a few of my mates from India can eat like really super hot Indian food and all this cool yummy stuff. Whereas I can sort of eat a little bit of it, but if I have like something too spicy, then like floodgates just open and it's like all hell breaks loose. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, just take it easy, chew your food, um, stay hydrated, hydrolytes, um, hydrolytes these little tablets you can get from the chemist um, and they're awesome, eh? I take like four or five of those a day, I think it's like sodium, I'm not too sure what it is, it might not be, who knows, but they hydrate you and um, that first six months with the stoma and then the next 12 months with the pouch, I was just throwing down like bucket loads of those things, they're awesome. Um, but yeah, with the J, with the stoma, chew, chew, chew. Try and chew as much as you can because you feel like a weird sensation when it's like popping out of like the intestine into the bag. And sometimes if you don't chew your food enough, and get a bit uncomfortable. But like uh, one day if I have to go back to having the stoma, I'm not going to be complaining. The stoma was cruisy. It was eat. Like I managed to do everything that I do now with it apart from surf. And I probably could surf with it. I just didn't then because I was a bit nervous that I was going to like pop it or like stuff something up and avoid or like prolong myself getting the pouch. <clears throat> um, so yeah, first surgery is heavy, second surgery is a lot easier. Um, I, there's not much else to say. Um, yeah, you just really, even take a food diary, you know, taking a food diary really helped me. And then like a, I know it's not much 
and it probably sounds a bit stupid, but I took like a shit diary. So every time I'd go to the toilet, take a dump, I'd write it in my diary, like a little whoop, just a line. And then once I, I started off at like 14 or something, I've still got it at my mum's joint. <clears throat> I started off pretty high and I'd like mark it off, mark it off. And then like over like six months, I could see like, it was slowly like, I was progressing, but my, my output was like decreasing. And um, like, I don't even know now. I did one about two weeks ago and I think it was about three to four in 24 hours. So wake up, probably go to the bathroom just as like a habit, you know, have a coffee and then just go chill out in the toilet and watch YouTube or something. And then it was about 3, 30, 4 o'clock. And then it was about 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. And then I'd probably go again just before bed, just so I didn't have to get up in like two or three hours and go to the toilet. But um, yeah, if I really wanted to, it could be three. But if I want to sleep through the night, it's four. Um, which is cool, man. Like I know people with colons that do more than that, you know. And it's not a competition, but to us it's a competition. We want to feel pretty, we want to feel normal too. <laughs> So, um, yeah, what else have we got? What else have we got to talk about, bro? All right, so earlier today I said that I was going to um, demonstrate um, how to release gas <laughs> and let a few rip and get comfortable like um, when I'm talking about um, preparing for the day. Um, I don't just wake up and leave the house. Um, and a lot of the times I find once I actually do go to the bathroom and pass stool, I they get the pouch fills up with gas and that's more uncomfortable sometimes um, than actual like crap. <laughs> so anyway, here we go. So the best way to do it, I think, and I know a lot of the guys in the chat have also done this, is I lay down on my stomach like this for like five minutes. And then once I've done that for five minutes, it must have something to do with gravity, because then I lay on my back which is a total contradiction, but I lay on my back for like another five minutes and I just relax. And then, depending on which side I think the pouch is facing, mine's that side, I just crank it over like that and whoever's like down there is in the firing line because shit's about to get real. 99.9% <laughs> of the time, it is just gas with me. I've only like had one accident and that was when I was brand new to like j Pab's life. Um, but you can generally, once you've had it for a year or two, you can decipher like between the two, you know? And it's no big deal. I just like, sometimes I'm like walking around too, like out in public and I'm like, oh. So I'll just go and like find a park or something. Boom. And then I'm good to go for like another couple of hours. <laughs> and that's a fact. Like I've got a van. Sometimes I just jump in the back of the van. Boom. And then I'm good to go again. Um, but yeah, you can generally tell whether it's going to be gas or whether it's not going to be gas. But I mean, we've all been there. Who cares if you shoot yourself? Big deal. You live and you learn. Um, and eventually you'll be able to tell between the two. But um, it's worth trying. Like there's other positions. I know that people do child's pose, which is when like you're on like your knees and you just pretty much just like relax like that. And then I know a few people... Um, benefit from that and that works for a couple of people as well which is fine but yeah just play around with it but there is ways to release gas even sometimes like once in a blue moon once out of maybe like a hundred times I can just do it standing up um, and that's generally in the mornings that I'm noticing now because there's no food in my stomach so that might be more of like a recurring thing uh, down the track once I like keep doing this fast this morning noon and then the night fast which is awesome so Okay, so I had, I put a quick video up this afternoon just to like let everyone know that I'm gonna publish a new video and to ask any last minute questions. I only had a couple on Instagram that I'm gonna address because the other ones on, Inst uh, sorry, the YouTube ones, the ones on Instagram are pretty much the same. Um, and I think I've already addressed this prior, but uh, Yash said, can you eat everything after j Pat surgery? Uh, and can you do gym? Yes, you can do gym like maybe give it like a few months like i said uh earlier on today um speak to your surgeon because there's a lot of like scars and a lot of like incisions and stuff um even though it's keyhole surgery most of it there's a couple of big ones um that need to heal so probably avoid core strength like abs and crunches and sit-ups and stuff like that uh and squats but just speak to your surgeon and then once like six months passes i guess you can, everyone does gym 
you know. Um, but just gauge it on how you feel as well. Don't start it too soon. Uh, and can you eat everything? I know heaps of people that have J pouches that eat everything. I pretty much eat everything. I just choose to not eat dairy and a lot of gluten because for me it makes me bloated and it is a bit of an inflammatory, so I just stick clear of that. Um, but I mean, I eat spicy foods. I don't have a lot of it, but when I do, I just um, have it balanced, you know, and I don't go overboard. Uh, fruit. I eat most fruits apart from apples just because me, they personally bloat me. Uh, what else do I eat? Um, 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 um. Is there anything else? I don't eat a lot of chocolate. Chocolate, I'm not a real big sweet tooth, but chocolate, if I do eat that, I'm fine. But if I eat a lot of it, um, what else was that? Red meat. Yeah, red meat. So I spoke about this today. I've introduced red meat a bit more. I've been eating a lot of beef jerky, which um, I've noticed gives me a lot more energy. It must have something to do with like the um, extra protein intake plus the iron um, that I gain from it. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. Sushi. Yeah, I, oh, I eat a lot of sushi. Oh yeah, the seaweed, yeah. I mean, see there's little things like this that you forget about that like you can still have bits and pieces of it, but it's easy enough to avoid. Like I could still eat heaps of other bits of sushi. Um, and nigiri and stuff and just I just don't have the rolls but when I do eat the rolls yeah they bloat me a tiny bit um, and I think like there's probably other things but 99 or 98% of the stuff you can eat generally um, and then the other question that a few people did ask was YT commented hey man I appreciate these videos three questions Oh, I'm going to have to open that up to see the three questions. First question was, when you just got your J-pouch, did you immediately start taking Imodium and gut stoppers, or did you wait a while after the reversal, and how long did you take them for? So basically, your surgeon will pretty much um, write you scripts and um, prescribe you what he thinks you'll need. So it depends on how your surgery goes, I guess, what state you're in, like if you're healthy, unhealthy, um, how you took to like the surgery. Um, but I started taking, me personally, I was on uh, codeine. They prescribed me codeine, which is not a really good drug. Like, I mean, it's beneficial in some ways, but there's a lot of uh, ways that it's not beneficial. And um, I had like sore kidneys all the time and stuff. My, my pee was like yellow or like really dark. So I got my, took myself off the codeine after about, it was about two years eh, I was on it. And the way I got off that was CBD and THC. Um, and that thickened my stool up enough. And at the same time, they prescribed me Imodium. So I was on six, I was on eight Imodium. That's six, I was on eight. I was on eight for about three months. Then I vaguely remember dropping down to like seven. Then slowly over like 18 months, I dropped down and now I take one a day. And I could take zero a day. I took zero a day for like two years, but I only take one a day now just to slow the food processing um, down. And hopefully like the way I think about it, if it's in me longer and I'm potentially gonna absorb more nutrients and minerals and calories and stuff out of it. But yeah, I have no dramas. If I, if I don't have gastro stops, um, I don't have any dramas, but I just don't want to stop taking them because then I feel like I'm going to lose weight or I'm not going to get all that I can out of the food that I'm eating. Um, so yeah, that answers that. He'll prescribe what you're on. Um, and yeah, I'm on one gastro stop now a day, just as soon as I wake up. So question two is, do you eat less than you would if you had a J-pouch? So I assume he's saying, if I had a colon, would I eat more? I mean, I probably would eat three times a day um, just for the extra calories and because I don't I mean, I'd probably just eat all the time, but I mean, it's a blessing in disguise because there's a lot of benefits to like fasting. If you look up like 20, like 16 hour fast, 20 hour fast and stuff, look at all the benefits and whatnot. Um, I can't rattle them off at the top of my head, but I, I've, I've looked at it and there's a lot. So I probably would eat more if I had a J pouch, but then I can't guarantee it was gonna be good food. When I, when, when I had, um, sorry, if I had a colon, if, when I had a colon, I was eating like shit food, you know? I'd eat takeaway and chocolate and Tim Tams and milk and more alcohol, 
So now everything's balanced out and I eat really good. So um, I take it as a blessing in disguise. I'm soaked in my pouch. Uh, and just for the record, it's nine o'clock and I woke up this morning, went to the bathroom at 6.30 and I got home and went to the bathroom at um, five. So that's nearly 12 hours and I, I don't need to go to the bathroom again now. It's nine o'clock here. So one shit in 15 hours, it's pretty decent. And then question three was, what tips can you give to achieve four bands daily like you have? Honestly, the best way to do it is to space your meals out and only have two meals. And it's it's hard, like the first, initially, I was like, oh my God, I'm starving and stuff like that. You know, skipping breakfast or skipping dinner, you feel like you're absolutely like starving. And it's hard for the first like month. But once you're used to it, if you can cram in two big meals, like like 1,000, 1,500, 1,700 calorie meals twice a day, um, it's awesome because it goes down, like with a pouch, it's pretty consistent. It goes down basically and comes out at the same time. You might have to sit on the toilet two or three times, but big deal. Um, and don't snack. Snacking's a killer, eh? If I snack, things just start to like turn on and yeah. I pretty much stuff it, you stuff it up for yourself and then you can stuff your sleep pattern up, you can stuff up what plans you had in the afternoon. Um, it's just all about being really disciplined and like you'll learn that over time of having a pouch, you just be really disciplined. Like I'm a creature of habit now, I'll have my routine, my coffee, my Metamucil, my tablets, my lunch, my brekkie, um, everything. So yeah, if you want to achieve four bowel, bowel movements today, eat well as well, don't have a lot of sugar. Um, and keep it regular, you know, get into a good routine. 6 a.m. Like, brekkie, sorry, 12 p.m. lunch, and then that's it, you know. And the fast doesn't include fluids, so I can have like coffee and cups of tea afterwards or water, um, or beers if it's the weekend or a Friday. Um, I think that was it. Yeah, that was it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, remember to leave a comment, um, like and subscribe it too if you want to hear more, and um, yeah, I'll look forward to hearing your feedback, so.